Welcome to Zack Attack Reviews, where I break down the good, the bad, and the ugly of sci-fi, comic book, and horror content and more. Today I have a non-spoiler review for Midnight Mass, directed and created by Mike Flanagan, one of my favorite directors doing it right now. He did a movie I watched like once a year called Hush. He also did two other Netflix series called uh, The Haunting of Hill House and The Haunting of Blind Manor, which I thought were really great. It's a show about a uh, dying, like, religiously and financially and like the land itself small town off the coast of a city that its priest is fallen sick has disappeared and everyone's starting to lose the faith really because all the bad things that's been going on in the town when a charismatic new priest comes in and he brings more fever more everybody's really excited to to go to church and everything again but he's starting to do miracles and there's other mysteries about him that people don't really understand mm -hmm. uh, i'm going to start off with what i really liked about the show the good first thing i gotta say that this show is shot gorgeously it's very cinematic it felt like i was watching a movie each episode the lighting the natural environments the location that they picked was very beautiful the colors popped when anytime they were inside of a building but when they were outside it was saturated but a very beautiful way it, and even to the point when they were because this is a fisherman town that they're in when they were on the water in the boats it had this uncanny feel where it kind of felt fake but it because it was, felt so realistic like it's like i was they're actually on a boat with people that it, it just tripped me out watching it in 4K. But yeah, Mike Flanagan and the cinematographer did a great job of making everybody look beautiful, making all the environments look beautiful, but also making the creepy and the scary parts of the show really gritty, really dark, and really set the mood and the atmosphere of what's to come. And the beautiful visuals is backed by a very unique story told by Mike Flanagan and the writers on this show. It's a biblical horror where they're showing the pros and cons of uh, of religion, different having different beliefs from someone, uh, having religious zealots, people who are into the word and don't see anything else, and you and manipulate people by using any spiritual text and having very charismatic leaders that will lead you down the wrong road. Those are just some of the themes that are going on in this show on the surface level, on the surface level, and there's other things going on, but it's heightened by this supernatural presence that is here, which I thought was a really interesting take for them to combine both, to not just show the, the bad of religion, but showing the good, but how those good people and those great people are being manipulated by someone who has the best intentions, but is also being manipulated by something else. It's It, it was a really layered story that I really enjoyed. And there's definitely some horror in this show, so very creepy, very scary moments. It's more about the people and the subject matter, and the horror is, is secondary, but the, some of the horror reminded me of the movie 30 Days of Nights, just on a smaller scare and not maybe not as vicious, but some of that that what was happening there that race to the daylight was in this movie and it made everything feel extra like intense the show being uh beautiful and gorgeously shot having an interesting story that kept me hooked through seven episodes seven very long episodes some of these episodes clocking over an hour was these fully realized characters uh katie siegel plays aaron green she's been in everything mike flanagan does she's married him but that's not the reason why that I think she keeps casting her. She's just a great actress. And she plays this, uh, act uh, the character very, very well, very, very emotional, very, very sturdy. Um, and she has great chemistry with the other main character who's Riley Flynn, the character that is coming back to this community after an accident causes him to be pulled away. And he's lost. He's no longer religious. He's trying to find his way after being gone for so many years. And he's played by, uh, I want to say a newcomer. I've never seen him before. Zachary Guilford. He's, he does, he does a really great role, you know, playing the black sheep. He does a really good job playing the black sheep of the family and making you feel for him and feel for the situation he's in. He's in even though he might've done something to and two of my other favorite characters in the show are Raul Kwan. Hopefully I'm saying your name correctly. But he's been in a bunch of stuff. And every time I see him, he does he knocks it out of part. And he does it again. He put, gets on his Clint Eastwood here as he plays the sheriff of the town, Sheriff Hassan. And he's one of the only people that's not Christian. He's a Muslim 
person in this show. So that, you know, battle of different beliefs, he was a part of that conversation. They did a really good job of using that to show why he didn't investigate the weird supernatural things that were going on. I thought that was executed really well. And another character that, it's funny to say she's my one of my favorite characters, played by Samantha Sloyan. I think her name was Bev. Yes, Bev Keen. I hate her. I hate not the actress, the character. She was a piece of shit. I I wanted her to get punched in the face every scene that she was in. But I I, I think it wasn't because it was it was a really well written character that was supposed to be like that that you were supposed to hate. And Be- uh, Samantha Sloyan plays Bev. Great. She was so good in this show playing this overzealous, you know, she thinks she's better than all, always reciting Bible verses to you, and a little bit of racist, and it was, it was a really interesting seeing her go from this quiet, annoying person to an an antagonist that really, really shined in the show, and I'm going to talk about some of my favorite episodes, where I think the, the show shines the most was episode three, where you know, the first two episodes, it's, it's, it's a little slow. They're, show, they're introducing you to the, the land, lay of the land, all the characters, the situation that they're in. Some of the creepy stuff starts happening here, so you're starting to wonder what's going on. But episode three is where they show what is happening, what exactly is going on. And that, that you know, I was fully in it. Something clicked in my brain. Where I was like, I need to see how this is going to be executed. And it did not disappoint. Episode six, which is the episode five and six, which is the last two episodes before the finale were really great this episode five had a really really emo- like exciting scary moment and also an emotional moment in it and then the episode six the one right before the finale which everything just went bonkers and i i've never seen anything like this before unlike it was like game of thrones red wedding or anything just think like along the lines of something like that those are some of my favorite episodes where i think it really shows why this show stands out and even though I think this show is absolutely amazing from the cinematography, the acting, the premise of the show, um, the, the actual look of the monster that's in the show. I don't want to spoil, spoil what it is. There are a little bit of bad, I think, but this will go, you know, if you think these things are bad, it depends on what you're looking for. I think that some of these episodes clocking over an hour was a little bit self-indulgence on the director's part. I enjoyed it because I liked seeing all the dynamics, but some people might want to, you know, this is a horror thing. Where's the horror? I don't care about these people talking about their religious beliefs or why, why they're doing what they're doing or why they don't believe in this and that. So depending on... You know, if the themes hit for you, it will depend on your enjoyment of the show. So I think that this is something very specific. It's not made for everyone, and I, it will cut some people out from enjoying the show. But it, it was good for me. Another thing that I could talk about was that some of the VFX and the makeup, for the most part, was was fantastic across the board, but for certain actors that they try to make look older than they actually were, you could kind of tell that the it was a wig or it was it wasn't a really well made wig. And Mike Flagan has had this problem in his other two Netflix shows. I don't know. He he makes really beautiful shows and he usually does really good with the monsters themselves. I think that he might cut a little bit of corners when it comes to some of the design on on the like the clothing and stuff like that. But it didn't bother me too. Much much because I see I saw what he was going for and where that led to and let's talk about my verdict um I I really really was wowed by the show I thought it was absolutely amazing I love high concept shows I love horror and thriller shows that can take real life situations and mix it with the horror and it's trying to have a message it's not just you know about killing people and and blood and gore it has that but it's also about the people in this town the, their religious beliefs and how the, you know the, the positive of those things and how it can bring people together and how those people can also be manipulated if people you know are too charismatic and feel like they're just right um, that plus the power performances some of the conversations that they had where they talked about those themes but they made it fit within the story and also all you know all the amazing sequences that were in this show especially toward the end really really made me 
love this show a lot. Like one of my favorite shows of the year that I've seen so far. And some of the bad, like I said before, was the VFX and some of the makeup choices and the pacing of some of the episodes. But overall, I think that this show, I'm going to give it a great of an A. Let me know what you think down below. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can see more of my content. Um, suggest some down below for me and you can watch more right now.